Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Order to Reformer Craft. Today we want to continue with some base building. I want to finish the cow barn, add an automatic cheese and sweet roll making system to it. And if there's some time left, also work on the house a little bit more. But let's actually start checking out the crops. So last year I put a ton of fertilizer in the ground for the rye and now the yield multiplier says 1. Usually it says 0 0.2. So it's not unreasonable to expect that we actually get five times the amount now. I'm just gonna get my knife here real quick so I can harvest this. There it is. So let's see. Actually getting seven now. Usually only got like one or two. Oh my god, only 24. Okay, let's do the full harvest. I'm also pretty sure the rye will never die. We're gonna keep this one out. Let's see if it actually dies in summer. Otherwise, we, we have to use the, the poisoned fertilizer to actually get more rye seeds. Or we actually move um, a bit to the south, or way up north, where it would die either when it's too hot or too cold. But I'm just gonna uh, harvest the, the rye here. Might need a bit more grains anyway for the animals. And look at that. Oh my god. Yeah, fertilizer is actually worth it now. Holy. That's so much. That's definitely gonna last almost a whole year. This little field there. Okay, then the barley is dead. That is good. Probably getting too hot. Um, we got two sure barley. That's three seeds from that. Okay. And another two got five. Alright, then I guess just matter of time until yeah, those three barley plants are also dead. And then we get more. Garlic. Yeah, temperature is already too high. It's also gonna die soon. That's good. Get more garlic seeds and there's also a lot of potatoes. I don't even need the potato seeds, but I just left them out. Because um, why harvest them if they would just yeah, spoil in the other containers? Could also maybe actually plant a couple more vegetables and use them for the composter. That might also be an idea. Time to plant the crops again, but I don't feel like I need much this year. So after this rye harvest, we definitely have enough grains for a while. And we can probably grow rye all year round. So in case we run low, we can just yeah, grow rye again, I feel like. No need for oats and wheat this year, unless we want to make more alcohol. Um, I'm definitely going to plant some jute. Also, since fertilizer is such a game changer, I'm actually going to use a, yeah, a lot of the saltpeter I got. So every time when I was mining gravel, I actually broke it down into white sand and then saltpeter in the end. And jute needs... What is it? Potassium. I think I looked it up. So if we get this to 100 and plant all of our jute seeds, we're gonna have such a huge jute harvest. I think we're good. That's probably all the sales we'll ever need. I'll also plant some rice again this year. So this time we definitely know that it has to be underwater. So we have this smaller lake plus cave entrance here quite close to the base. That's perfect spot, I feel like. It has also been a bit over a year since I planted the fruit trees. I want to check up on those. So it looks like we will actually get more saplings out of this. So I just planted those for the saplings. Here's the green apple tree. And it had four branches, but looks like I can get more out of this already. So probably no point waiting for this to grow even larger. Let's see, there's one sapling. That should be another. Then let's get this here. We already have four, okay. So we do get more saplings if we do this every year. But that's good to know. I guess then I'm gonna cut down all the trees. It really seemed like the tree with the, the four, or oh, that I spliced three times, had four branches, it's really not the best type of tree compared to the others. So we had a lot of yeah, ones that had two branches. They didn't even grow that large. So I guess going for the full size it is. I definitely didn't make too much profit. So I got seven saplings each now. But if you do this every year, we'll get somewhere, I feel like. Okay, there's actually a lot of space here on flat ground next to the cow barn. I'm gonna plant the fruit trees this year at least here. Okay, lemon first. I'm gonna splice this as often as we can and then some nice distance in between, like five blocks. If the next one, let's do the same with the apple trees. We can go high of the distance. He blocks, yeah, maybe seven would be better. 
As long as we have the space, let's go for this. Next, let's continue with the cow barn. I just ran into a small issue. So it seems like the deployer here, for some reason, is not milking the cow. Ah, I see what it is. It's probably aiming right in front of the cow, so if I just push it ever so slightly a bit to the front. Then, uh, all the way. <laughs> then it should work again. No? I guess this fence setup is just not good enough. What should we use instead? A wall is slightly larger. Could work. See if it works now. Is it broken in a different way? But it doesn't milk. Oh. Eh? Does he have a milk bucket in his hand? No. Oh. It's a normal bucket. Huh. Just wanna check what he's actually holding. It's two buckets? That's the problem. How does he have two buckets? Either we have a case of bucket duping or something went wrong there. I have no idea. Okay, let's put the bucket back. It should work again. I have no idea where the bucket came from. I probably just put a second bucket in there by accident, but I'll definitely keep an eye on it. Hopefully it doesn't break again. Alright, then I want to continue by placing at least the walls of the barn. I'm gonna stick to using the local yeah, materials I've always used, like the andesite, desite, stone types. So what you got underground and sycamore and what's the other one called? Chestnut trees, because it just makes the most sense. People build with what they have available. So it wouldn't make too much sense if we now start building with exotic tree types that don't even grow here and so on. Okay, then yeah, I'm just gonna build normal walls. I was thinking to actually have this side of the cow barn open and place iron bars. I actually looked up the recipe and it, they're really expensive. So there aren't the vanilla iron bars that are really cheap usually. Vanilla, you have an iron farm and then iron bars are like super cheap. But here for eight steel bars, there, are not, there aren't even any iron bars. I need to spend one steel sheet. So basically out of one ingot, you get four steel bars. It's gonna be expensive, but I really want it. So I think this side of the barn will be closed. I'm just gonna place planks. And yeah, here I want iron bars to have it open. At least we're using the steel for something. I should have definitely actually gone for the double sheets immediately, because then I can get 60 bars out of a double sheet. So less anvil work, but I already heated up the normal sheets. So I'm just gonna use them. Recipe is also not too bad to, to craft it. Uh, I think it's two punches, draw and a medium hit, two punches again and upset. Uh, that's how I do it now, but there's probably a better way. Let's see. How close do we actually get if we now do the punch punch upset? Ah, okay. So I guess if we do two shrink and one upset, then the other steps will get there. Um, let's try that next time. What? Didn't get it? We cool off? No, can weld. Punch, punch, upset. Okay, let's try the next one. Let's see. Upset. And then we have to do punch, punch, upset. Yeah, okay. Figured it out. Okay, now it's gonna go a lot quicker. Okay, so let's place some of them down. That's what I actually got out of 18 steel ingots. It's not a lot. Got eight left. That's basically half of it. But it does look nice. They can actually see that you worked for something. Um, yeah. Kind of want this on the other side as well now, because if you look at it from the main area, this looks a little bit plain. I mean. It's a cow barn, it's not supposed to look fancy. I feel like if we had some bars here, this would also be nice. Yeah. Oh god, it's gonna be the, all the steel I have. <laughs> just for, just for, yeah, iron bars. I think it's gonna look better though. 
Okay, finally finished. Things like this is actually why I'm really glad we're playing auto terraformer craft, and not just terraformer craft, because imagine going through all of the steps you would need to do just to place a couple steel bars. So you would need to, yeah, put in flux, iron, coal, make pig iron, work on the anvil to get steel ingots, work it again to make sheets. Then, uh, for auto terraformer craft, I can just use the, the crate mod machines. I just had to do the, the, the last step of actually making the iron bars in the end. But once you actually know the right anvil sequence, then it's also not a lot of work. So it was okay. <laughs> now we just need a roof on top of this. Earlier I said we're going to use the materials that are yeah, available here. But I just don't see myself using the andesite bricks as a roof material. I actually went through the whole list of slabs to see if maybe there is one that I would like. And I'd really like to use shared raw slabs for this. Uh, that's actually quite hard to get. I think we found shared stone already in one of the biomes. So I could get it, but of course it's a raw stone again. Which right now is a bit tedious until we have a lava source available that we can just put a fan in front. Um, I think I've seen a lava source once or twice. Uh, definitely there was one when I was driving down the river here, there was one on the side. Would be a lot of work actually to get a fan there, <laughs> just to convert a bit of charred cobble into a raw stone. But maybe we'll just leave out the roof for now and add it in one of the upcoming episodes. So we still have the copper rod in case there's some lightning strike, uh, this thing shouldn't burn down at all. Okay, then let's get the cows in, the remaining ones. All the cows are in now, but it's just a waiting game now. So the cows that I got from exploring, they're all pregnant. It will take two more months and seven days for them to give birth. And here we got the baby cows. Yeah, those have been around for quite some time. I think I'm going to use those actually for breeding. Um, so there's four months left until they grow up because they're at familiarity 100. If it works like with the other animals, their babies should also be at familiarity 90 already. And just feeding them twice. This is almost no effort. This is definitely not even worth it to try to automate it with the deployer because it's like feeding it twice is like, I'm gonna come by anyway and check what's going on. Like, I'm gonna check uh, how much milk we have. 17 buckets by now. Okay. Then I was actually thinking of doing something a bit for fun, not necessary. I wanna actually use some of the, the great mod tools to make a, a door for the barn. So I was thinking we could have a mechanical bearing that opens both sides of the barn, um, basically turns it 90 degrees. So I think I'm just gonna use like a node block and an observer below. If I click this, it will open the barn doors. Maybe it takes like three, four seconds to do that. And then after five seconds, it closes it again. I think it would look cool. Okay, but unfortunately don't have really all the tools yet. So there's still, for example, for the sequence gear shift, there's some stuff that I don't have access to. Uh, we should go exploring again and get that soon. This electron tube that I need for a lot of the more advanced, yeah, create mode machinery, which requires this rose quartz. And here's really the problem. Rose quartz shouldn't be that much of an issue. I can heat this up now. Halite I have, redstone dust I have and crystallization crystal oh bismuth or i have actually a little bit of that but i think i actually turned it into an ingot by now okay we need to get bismuth as well but here sandpaper is also required so this actually used to be just normal paper but in the last terraformer craft update they added a new plant and there's a whole uh yeah intended way to get paper now so if you follow this unrefined paper paper strip a pure strip or oh, sugarcane strip does also work. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I thought we need to get papyrus. But if sugarcane also works, then we can do this instead. And now I thought we need to get papyrus. That's the new plant that also got added. Oh, it's actually a shame. Can't just use the sugarcane instead. Um, I'm not totally sure if you liked it. 
Anyway, I might just refuse to use the sugarcane recipe because I want to go exploring anyway and get the papyrus, the new plant. Okay, that just explains why I don't have all the tools and this contraption might be a little bit more complicated than yeah, it would be if I have all the materials available. So the plan is now basically to have a bearing here, a mechanical bearing, and then just glue all of those blocks together. And it should open this way. Okay, there's a lot of space actually to create. Because it needs yeah exact instructions what to do, so it sh should open this way and then close again after some time. Okay, I already prepared some redstone. So those pulse extenders and pulse repeaters from create mode are actually OP. Like all the vanilla redstone you'd normally do is actually almost replaced by this stuff. So it's actually crazy. So there's definitely uh, an incentive to still play vanilla, not just mod it, because things just um, aren't that trivial. Okay, then let's say I'm gonna actually also run a shaft over, so we have a rotational force available as well, and make some space and then set this up. All right, rotational force is in. The idea is basically that we have a clutch here that we power so the bearing doesn't turn. And below we got a gear shift. So if you press the no block, you send a signal that turns off the clutch for a moment. Then this turns yeah, 90 degrees. We have just have to unpower this for a certain amount of time. Then we wait 5 seconds. Then we activate uh, the gear shift and unpower the, the clutch a second time for the same amount of time. So I was thinking we can definitely use those extenders here just to get a pulse of a certain length. And yeah, then we need to basically add a little bit of redstone wiring. Um, how do we even do this? Might be best if I actually get something to encase this so I can put a dot on top. So my idea would have been, because we have to unpower this a second time, to just strong power this, and the second time we soft power it. Um, yeah, let me get a casing real quick and let's set up the rest. Okay, I got a casing if we need it. Let's also quickly check if this actually turns the right way, so it should of course open towards me. And it does. Okay, it actually goes rather quick. How long will it take? I guess I had like three, four seconds. Okay, so I got two extenders already set up, so we can really fine-tune it again with the seconds and ticks. Okay, uh, we can maybe do that later. Just wanna get the wiring done. Yep, then I can put a dot on here. And I guess then we need another extender. Um, how do we do this? In the end, run the signal in there again. Could use a target block there, that might be the best choice. We brought two. Mm, gotta replace this real quick. There you go. Okay, now we open it 90 degrees. Uh, let's actually close it again. That's why we got the gear shift for. Yeah, can also use this later to test how long the signal needs to be exactly. Okay. Put it down a little bit. Okay, I guess I can take the signal from here. If we maybe use a pl uh, just a slab there, then I can run it down and just add an extender. So we just extend this by another five seconds, then add a repeater. It would give us a pulse after like eight seconds in total. Oops, what does that even do? We just turn it on. The eight seconds, yep. And you see, we have space for this. So after this, this gives us a short pulse. We basically need to run it into the target block again and power the gear shift at the same time. Mm, I'll try around a bit and find a nice way to, to wire this actually. Alright, so it didn't take long, got a working setup for the wiring. Later we can probably replace all of this with like five blocks. Uh, with the advanced gear shift and then there's the links, which is basically wireless redstone. But yeah, for now this also works. So I already did the testing, apparently three seconds and 16 ticks at 4 RPM. It's a nice timing to turn this 90 degrees like this. There we go. Okay, 
Let's close it again. This is basically the sequence I also want. Open it, wait five seconds, and then close it again. Okay, then I can also hook this up. Five seconds, here the repeat is on eight for the short pulse. So instead of vanilla, you would, I guess, have a, yeah, a torch, and then just a short pulse generator, like a sticky piston in an observer. But the trade mod repeater does that as well. Okay, then here we also need 16 ticks and seconds. Then pulse the redstone torch again, so the clutch is turned off. Then we run the second line into the gear shift. Okay. Yep, that should actually work. Okay. I just need to wait for this. There we go. Closes again. Yes. Maybe actually two ticks longer. Not to be glitchy in the end. Then we're basically at four seconds. Um, oh yeah, four RPM. No, oh god, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> of course, four RPM. Yeah, of course, you can just do the math instead of trying around. But actually, uh, from testing, I needed a bit more delay, it seems like. So, 4 RPM means this thing turns around 4 times per minute. So, one full rotation takes 15 seconds, and we need a quarter turn. So, 3.75 seconds, so 75 ticks for a quarter rotation. Um, so, technically, I would then need 3 seconds and 15 ticks. But uh, yeah, server post is already two ticks, so 13 ticks. But that looked a bit glitchy to me. So maybe the clutch has a bit, a bit of delay. Let's try 18. It's a bit more fluid in the end. Yeah, that look, looks better. Maybe the clutch has like five ticks of delay or whatever. That's perfect. Okay, now I just need to basically mirror everything and build it on this side as well, so both doors open. Unfortunately on this side there's the shaft here in the way and the gearbox. We could yeah, move it all, but we can also redo the redstone. Just have the same, just arranged differently, so it should work. Set this one here to 18. This one to 3 seconds. It should also work. It's basically the same wiring, just different. Okay, let's try this out. Oh no! Ah, could have removed the torch. <laughs> Should work. Oh no! Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. Uh, gotta fix this manually real quick. It actually replaces blocks. Wow, block breaker. Who's, who needs a wither if you have that stuff? Did I get even all blocks back? Looks like it. Okay. Yeah, now that the torch is gone, it should work now. Yes. Okay. That's actually fancy. <laughs> it's just gimmicky stuff you can do with the grape mold, but it's actually neat. Sweet. Now I just need to hide away this beautiful survival redstone. Let's not talk about it. Once I have the advanced gear shift, I can, as I said, replace it for like five blocks. It's gonna be so much nicer. But at least we got it to work for now. It's also kind of neat to not have everything available right away. So we have a nice slow progression. Okay. Actually scared if I place dirt on it. Uh, the, yes. Uh, yes. I was waiting for that. I was supposed to place the dirt again. <laughs> I guess fill this up with planks wherever possible. Damn. Okay, so if you have the slabs... Yeah, you can definitely hide away. Okay, so the nice thing really about using the note block here is I can open it from both sides now. But it's so nice. <laughs> and if the five seconds are not the quite right time because I need to get the cows in and out, but why? Don't, don't think I need to do that. And of course, we can still change it. <laughs> could do this all day. All right, guys. So good progress was made today, but unfortunately we couldn't get to automating cheese. We'll do that in one of the upcoming episodes. That's all for today. Thanks, guys, for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.